from what I know, that is the duty of a disciple. That once you've taken somebody as your guru, um, as long as you accept that person as your guru, you follow what you're asked to do. So his question is, what is the foremost duty of a disciple towards one's guru? There was a, once in a jungle a great famine. And as a result, all the animals started starving and they started dying out of starvation. The king of the jungle, the lion, said, look, I know a solution. So basically what's happened is our sins have caught up to us, with us. So now we must purge ourselves of all the bad karma we have done. We must confess. And that confession will purify us, will heal us. And that's the only way that Mother Nature is going to be kind to us and is going to get rid of this famine and the rains would come down pouring, then everything else will happen. And so he gathered all the animals around. He said, I will start because I must set a good example. He said, so um, one time it so happened, uh, a human being was passing through the woods and I pounced on him and I was hungry. And as is my nature, I devoured him. So that is my sin to this day, I regret. All the animals said, oh no, king, oh Maharaj, perfectly okay. You are the king after all. You must have thought of our welfare. Uh, that, that man, that traveler must have had some concealed weapon or something. So I don't think, we don't think you did anything wrong. No sin in that whatsoever. Next was the wolf. And he said, I must confess, uh, one day I... Uh, ate a very young calf, which was totally uh, helpless and defenseless against my fangs and my attack. And the lion said, I don't think that's a sin. I don't think you have to confess that. All the other animals joined in the chorus. Of course, you must have been hungry. Sometimes when we are very hungry, we make mistakes. So it was an honest mistake. It's not a sin. Then there was a little lamb, and the lamb said, also made a, committed a sin. They said, you? <laughs> what could you do? Who could you attack? He said, no, I have uh, something to confess. One time, it so happened that a traveler was sleeping, and I was so hungry, and I ate one of his shoes. <laughs> and as a result, now he couldn't possibly travel with one shoe on. So the poor thing had to travel on uh, basically barefoot all the way and uh, he was, his heels hurt and they were wounded. And everybody started circling around that lamb, you wicked lamb. <laughs> How could you be so cruel? And the king indicated and they ate him. Now that is the story. So the foremost duty of a disciple is to shed any air of superiority around them, any air of pretense around them. Believe it or not, this is the foremost duty because everything else will stem from this natural humility that will gush forth when we adopt such a practice. So everybody thinks I'm the lion. And when you act like a lion, you'll be surrounded by those who'll say, you are the lion, no mistake in whatever you did. But the, the so-called wicked lamb wasn't wicked after all. 
But somehow, he was surrounded by those who had a different agenda. As I said, it's very hard to make a man understand something when his salary is dependent on not understanding it. When somebody is dependent on not understanding your point of view, it's very hard to explain anything to them. So the foremost duty is that. To genuinely be humble. I'm not talking about being polite. That's somewhat easy to practice with people who are good with you. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm talking about being humble. And when you are humble then, that's the only time when you can really then follow the destruction, I mean the instruction of the Guru. <laughs> you can only follow the instruction of the Guru subsequently. Not, after, not before then. Until then it's always an attempt. So the foremost duty is to understand what the tenets of discipleship are and to live by them. What else possibly could be a disciple's duty in my mind? I mean, guru, when a guru imparts an instruction, it's, it can be different for different people, as you know. So when I was at Nagababa's place, I mean, that's how I saw as my duty that he said something, I would say, okay, done, I mean, ji baba. And I always give this example that if you have an arrow, right, uh, a firm, straight arrow, and you're good at archery, and then you're shooting that arrow, your chances of hitting that arrow right at the target are much higher. But imagine in the name of an arrow you have a, a wobbly snake. How would you pull it against the string and how would you launch it? Where would it land? So when you have a disciple who's kind of either um, indecisive um, or uh, fickle-minded, or pretentious, then it's very hard to do anything worthwhile with that disciple. And sometimes you can have somebody who has a different agenda to what they are projecting. Uh, it's even harder for that person to grow at all spiritually in any way. So I think, um, not I think, from what I know, that is the duty of a disciple that once you've taken somebody as your guru, um, as long as you accept that person as your guru, you follow what you're asked to do. The moment you say, look, I'm done, you have every right to move on.